Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rel, and this week's build I'm featuring here is a GT40. And this isn't just any GT40. This is Le Mans winning GT40, uh, 24 hours of Le Mans, which uh, Ford had uh, won a number of times. But this one was a little bit different, and there are a number of things that contributed to it. But this is the 1969 24 hour of Le Mans winner. And what makes this one really special is uh, there were a bunch of things that actually happened that kind of uh, changed a few things. But Ford was out of racing as far as factory backing went in 69 and 68. But uh, they had set out to uh, prove what they, they did prove, and they were extremely happy with that. So a quick recap, uh, when Ford wasn't able to purchase Ferrari, and if you've seen the movie uh, Ford versus Ferrari, it really goes into this. But since they weren't able to buy them, they really wanted to beat them. So they developed the, the GT40 here, which is... Uh, grand touring and 40 for 40 inches tall, but um, they didn't really have a whole lot of success at first um, They came out with the mark ones first. They really didn't call them that but they they had the small block versions first and a 64 uh, part of 64 and 65 But they got Shelby involved and also got Holman and Moody involved and but uh, in 66 the 24 hours of Le Mans they had won, and they had won with a 1-2-3 sweep finish with those cars. And those were Mark II 427 cars. And they were fast, extremely fast, scary fast. And Ford had continued their involvement, and in 67 they had developed the Mark IV, which was also a 427 car. And um, I'll show you one of those sometime because I had built a couple of those. That was dangerously fast too. And some of them had crashed and uh, people had died in them, but uh, the cars were getting extremely fast. So France, deciding to try and slow down the racing and everything, decided that they were going to limit it to 5 liters and 305 cubic inches. So that killed all of the, the 427 Mark IIs, which is what the legend is about. But that freed up room for these Mark Ones with the 289s, because they fit the bill perfectly. But Ford pulled out of racing. He decided that uh, they have proven what they wanted to prove. They really don't need to do it anymore. So they pulled out of uh, racing. But that left a lot of privateers that wanted to race them. And this one is a Gulf car uh, from the uh, Gulf Motor Oil. And it's in their colors. And uh, they decided that they wanted to go racing and they wanted to, to do this. So they teamed up with uh, JW Automotive Engineering and they took over the racing program for Ford and they were uh, building and developing uh, GT40s. Now, these are one of the first ones to come out after that Ford's involvement. So they had uh, taken some of the things that they had learned and they built uh, a few chassis. This one is P1075. They had P1074, which was a Mirage. If you know what that is, it has a different roof. That's a very special car, but a uh, subject for another model and another time. And then also P1076, a sister car. So they developed these three cars. I think this one might have been a Mirage at first. Don't really know. The race history is kind of vague, but it was new for 68, and I believe it was not a Mirage, that it was an actual GT40 Mark I um, as seen. And... I'm not 100% sure on its first race, but this is the car that actually won the 24 Hours of Le Mans twice, in 1968 and in 1969. Only one other manufacturer car has done that. Uh, I don't remember exactly which car that was and when it was, but I believe this one was the first, but won Le Mans two times straight. Uh, in 68 and 69, but this model kit is the Fujimi version of that thing and it's wearing the 1969 colors Now interestingly, um, I did do the 68 car and, and I will probably talk more about that one in a separate specific video But the 69 car It was a bit more of a battle, but uh, for it to duplicate what it did in 68 it dominated uh, leading 17 of the 24 hours and being a 289 car um, with the different heads and everything that was done to it, the eagle heads or gurney eagle heads. 
So it was it was quite a match there on the on the race course, very competitive with the limits that were placed upon them. So and an, another interesting fact that I had found, and I couldn't find anything more on it, was there was mention that these cars were um, carbon fiber reinforced. I don't know what that means to the body, and what I did find mentioning it was talking about the Mirage car and these two cars where some of the first ones actually have carbon fiber in them, but it wasn't a full carbon fiber uh, front and rear. I understand these were still fiberglass, but there was carbon fiber reinforcing put into them. Matter of fact, one of the other cars I was reading about 1074, its rear half was taken off at one point in time. And the car itself now has a rear section from another car that's an earlier fiberglass non-reinforced piece, but the real cars, the original piece that is carbon fiber reinforced is in um, England or France, and uh, it's known, the whereabouts of it is known. Um, but now I'm getting a little off, off topic. But this car, it won in 68 with a couple of drivers, but in 69, they had a completely different set of drivers. Uh, it had Jackie Ix and Jackie Oliver driving. And interesting, Jackie Ix, he was protesting the famous Le Mans start. If you know what that is, that's where they stood outside their car and they ran across, jumped in the car, fired it up and pulled off. And, and in the movie, he's having trouble shutting the door, but this is a different guy. And a lot of them didn't get their seatbelts on right away. They started driving and they managed to get their seatbelts on them. And uh, Jackie decided he was just going to leisurely stroll across. He wasn't going to run to his car. He sat down, got his racing harness on, and then started the car and left. He left in last place. So for him to make his way up the field and dominate, and it wasn't uh, a full domination like in the 68 race, this car managed to perform fairly flawlessly and managed to get up to the pack. And it was a heated battle for the last two and a half hours, according to what I was reading, that it and a Porsche 908 were swapping first and second positions for like the last two and a half hours. And he ended up winning the race by only 100 yards. Now, the way they judge um, the 24 hours of Le Mans is distance. And it was, it was the winner. And being that the car uh, was a two-time winner. It was just unbelievable with different drivers and kind of a different attitude and circumstance. So that makes this car very unusual and um, its racing history is invaluable. However, when it comes to the value of these, this particular car has an unknown value because Gulf Oil held on to it for a long time. Um, it did eventually go to private hands. It was in a museum for a very long time. So it hasn't sold at auction. So it's kind of hard to say what this one is. The one that was built right before it, uh, P1074, that's the one that sold at RMM auctions for a record-breaking $11 million. And that car, it does have some wins on it, but it has a, a completely different history and a, a completely wild story uh, to it. But this car, it's probably one of the most winningest GT40s out there. And that to me is fascinating. I really don't know um, how many of them raced as hard as this one is. But this one entered 11 races. That's quite a bit. I'm, there are not too many GT40s that I've researched that have done that many. But out of those 11 races, it won six of them. That's more than half. That's kind of an unbelievable feat. But I will admit, I haven't researched all the chassis numbers and all the racing history. Just some of the more significant ones, like this one, because it's won Le Mans twice, which I didn't really know that too much when I built this one, because I literally built it out of the box, and I was just enjoying it as it was, and I didn't know too much about it. But when I realized that the Fujimi had the same chassis number in the box arts, I had built the sister car, and this is the 68 version, um, that one, but it's, it's literally the same car, but... I really like how the paint came out on this one. I use scale finishes paint and it's actual orange and gulf blue. So it is the actual gulf colors where this one, I just used what I had, kind of mixed it up. It's a little bit more of a pale blue. You can see the decals here and where I painted the orange on it and used the decals for the stripes. 
So it's got its flaws. It's not perfect. And the decals are kind of cracking. I did try to put the Weber's in it instead of what it had, uh, which was almost nothing. But I enjoyed building this and I really enjoy these kits. And especially the wide bodies. These Mark 1's, the later ones, are much wider for these really big tires. And the engine's kind of off to the side. And I really like these Fujimi kits. They're pretty um, easy to build. Uh, they show really, really well. This one has the later door handles right here, the slide pin ones, which um, these cars did have, but some of the earlier kits don't. So there's a number of differences that are in these kits, but I just love them and they're just a lot of fun. And I like to read and research the actual stories of the cars. Some of them, the stories get a whole lot better after their racing history. This one, because of its racing history and the fact that uh, Gulf Oil held on to it, they sold some of the cars, but they held on to this one and it hasn't traded very often. So it does make some shows. It's been in a couple of museums. It's, it's been around and shown. I understand it uh, hasn't really been restored and it's uh, pretty much displayed as is, but it's got a pretty predominant racing history and, um, quite quite a number of accolades that go along with it but it's just amazing that uh, you know it's it's still out there and it's still fairly uh, original so the value of it is really unknown as far as its value and its accomplishments but it's just it's kind of an amazing story really uh, the kit's a simple kit if you built these there's really nothing to it there's really not a motor or anything but there is resin conversions to put the motor in it uh, i have bought them i haven't used them I've got a ton of these in my stash. This one I really want to rebuild or repaint or just do another one. I haven't decided. I kind of, I like this one and part of me is like, just pull the body off and repaint it and redo it. I have three more of these kits in my stash. I think I have like 10 of these GT40s, but I picked all of them up at swap meets and shows and where I can find them cheap before uh, uh, they got ridiculous on, on eBay, especially after the uh, Ford versus Ferrari movie. Now they're just asking all kinds of money and they're selling for that. So uh, it's cool that they're going for that, um, but I'm not interested in selling any of mine, but it kind of makes it harder to buy them. But uh, they're great kits and I really enjoy them, even though now Ming has one and uh, so does uh, Fujimi, but um, um, the Ming one looks pretty cool. But I haven't bought that one because I have these, but uh, show that one side by side. But this one just, you know, once you put them side by side, you can kind of see why I really want to redo this one and, you know, just repaint it to match this one. But uh, uh, that's probably enough on this, but uh, just having a little bit of fun with this. I had to put a white background under it because my phone was having fun with the white balance. It was trying to change it orange and, and messing with it a little bit. So turn the lights off and it seems like this is getting me the best picture uh, on this phone. So I went with this for the moment. So I know it's a little bit different as far as the background with the white and everything, but um, the white balance was just really messing with it. So uh, that's why I kind of did it this way and just make it video a little bit differently. But um, that's kind of enough on this one, but there's plenty more stories with GT40s and I'll get to some and I love building them. But uh, thank you for tuning in, subscribing and all your comments are really appreciated. And you guys, you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next Saturday. Bye now.